All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And of course, thanks for subscribing. Now that we've got the latest FSD beta build 10.12.2, I wanted to take a minute to take a look at some of the features that have been added from sort of the main releases to the Tesla Model S Plaid or the Tesla Model S Palladium, which is inclusive of the new refresh long range as well as the Plaid, and talk about what new features have been added for them. We're gonna go through the release notes first, and then we're gonna talk about some things that are not documented in the release notes that are just in general added to, the, uh, to this particular new Plaid or new Palladium, I'll call it. Instead of calling it refresh, I'll call it the code name that Tesla uses, Palladium uh, Model S and Model X for that matter. Okay, so first and foremost, we'll jump right into it in the release notes. It says the cabin camera is now active. That wasn't the case before uh, where the, ca the camera was not monitoring your face. It's now active now, monitoring your face, monitoring your eyes, making sure you're looking at the road in terms of monitoring the driver. It's probably on, but it probably wasn't actively monitoring the driver's eyes, so on and so forth. It's now active now in this latest build. Okay. So that's the first thing. The second thing that we have here based, the based on the release notes is the increased speed of autopilot. Um, using the traditional autopilot, which uses a lot of sensors and radars, um, the new autopilot, the direction that Tesla wants to go in is more vision-based, vision only without the use of the long range radar. So as a result, as a precaution, they wanna scale back the ability for autopilot to drive at high speeds using just the cameras and so so slowly gradually bring it back up to parity with the radar version, which can go 90 miles an hour as a maximum. This one used to go 80 miles an hour as a maximum. It now can go 85 miles an hour. And hopefully the next step will be 90 miles an hour uh, for vision only for autopilot. So that max speed has been updated, which is pretty cool. All right, additional bottom bar customizations. This is pretty straightforward for us. Uh, I think the only difference here for these cars is just the fact that it's no longer stretched across the entire bottom. It's contained within a square, which is similar to how uh, it is for the Model 3 and Model Y, um, et cetera. Uh, so just making sure that it's consistent with Tesla because we have so much more screen real estate. We could technically make this the entire width, but they're going to try to keep it contained here just to make it easier to drag icons to where you need to drag them here. So that's pretty cool. All right. And the other thing here is the child lock. Uh, the child lock can now be used and set for individual doors uh, in terms of uh, right or left specifically or both. Go onto the menu, go to child lock. We keep ours on and you can choose both. So both left and right doors in the rear will be uh, locked for, for children, or you can just keep the one where your child seat is, is close to right or left, et cetera. So you just press on it and you get there. So that's pretty much it. Uh, additional mobile app controls. These are going to be uh, being able to enable dog mode and camp mode from the app. I think that was a, a couple of releases ago that they added that one, but that's there as well. But specifically for this particular car, these, this, this interface, this UI, uh, we have now some additional features uh, that are undocumented, such as the True North symbol being down here now, as opposed to being up here by the navigation bar. I kind of got used to it being up here, especially if you, when, we, when we drive back and forth between the X, which has the vertical screen versus the horizontal, and just having it consistently be there. Uh, but here is good too. It's right in within arm's reach. However, because it's using the yoke in this particular car, it's blocked. So if you have the, your justification for your navigation to the left, as opposed to the right, you're going to get this button here, which is clear from the view of the camera, but not so clear from the view of the driver because the yoke kind of blocks that. So you have to lean over a little bit and then you can press this and orient the map how you see fit. All right. And then they've also added back and this is probably a couple of releases ago as well. And again, these, these are the beta releases, which get some of the main releases, but primarily the main releases have gotten these previously before. So it's not a big deal for them. But if we're on beta, we, we typically miss out on the main release features until the latest beta build comes out. So again, here they've added back the quick icon for charging. One of my biggest complaints when I first talked about getting this car was that they took away some of the features and functionality that we were used to and accustomed to in these, in these cars. And so now they brought back the quick icon to be able to select here and be able to quickly navigate to a supercharger or destination charger, et cetera, as opposed to having to click on the navigation menu and then click there. So that a single press versus a double press. All right. Uh, and just to show you what that looks like, I'll drag this over here. I'll drag this over here. And as you see here, here's a true north, still within arm's reach, but a little bit further away uh, versus being up here. So just to give you a sense of what that looks like. All right, the other thing that they've added 
for this particular uh, release that is a little bit undocumented. And again, if you have uh, the newer cars, the newer Palladium S's with the um, the updated charge port and the updated rear lights, you're gonna get a display icon here, which allows you to be able to tilt this display. Elon, what are we doing here? These, all of us who bought the new car when it was initially launched and released and, and advertised and marketed, we all got the, the, the indication that this screen could tilt, but we never figured out how to do it. We, we didn't know if it was a mechanism because this is pretty locked into place. After a couple teardowns, uh, we see that the, the mechanisms are there, but the motors are missing. And now with the new cars that are being delivered, the new ones with the new charge port, the new taillights, um, they have those motors in place and they actually have the functionality to tilt the screen left or right or keep it centered here uh, the way it is now. Uh, would love to have a retrofit for this Elon. Come on, man. We got to do right. Got to do right by us early adopters. We can't get burned time and time again uh, for getting for being early and being an early adopter. We got to be able to have a retrofit for these motors. Hopefully it's included because obviously we, we paid for what we saw on the website, uh, which was then subsequently removed. And now people who bought the car without it being there are now getting the feature. So that's a little bit unfair. Uh, would love to be able to get a retrofit, but you get a display button. You can press it and tilt the screen left or right. And the screen actually adjusts left or right accordingly would love to get it more centered towards the driver which may eliminate some of the blind spots from the yoke on the screen as well just by tilting it a little bit more this way so hopefully fingers crossed elon you're watching you're listening and you do the right thing here uh, and allow for a retrofit can't be that many cars um, that don't have that so shouldn't be a big deal all right but that's there um, the other thing that's here is the ability to now go into neutral through the touch screen Previously, when we had these cars, the only way that you could actually go into neutral would be to activate the icons down here, uh, right? So the, the, the driving icons that are down here um, on the little panel here. Um, now we have the ability to now hold this button here, right here, and go into neutral. Okay, so I can, I'll put my foot on the brake. I'll hold this. See that? And now it's in neutral. Okay, I'll put it back in part. All right, so that's pretty cool. A new feature, much welcome, because again, you couldn't really put it in neutral other than to uh, activate the icons here by hard pressing. Or the other tip here is to hold the both scroll wheels quickly, right? Not too long. You hold them too long, it's going to reset the displays. If you hold them quickly, it'll beep, and then it'll activate the icons down below that you can't see uh, for the hard-coded buttons or the touch-sensitive buttons for uh, the drive selector. OK, so that's that's what's there. Uh, the other option that they give you here, that they don't rec they don't tell you about is the ability to link phones to specific profiles. Right. So the idea is that. As a, uh, a driver of a Tesla, you typically would have a key fob prior to the Model 3 and Model Y. You have a key fob and you can link your profile to a given key fob. And that was pretty cool. Uh, so if you're, you know, your spouse or you have a different profile, each key can be linked to that. So when you approach the car, it'll load up your profile automatically and adjust your seats, your mirrors, everything like that. So that was no problem. The problem is once they introduced the phone key, there really wasn't a mechanism to link your phone key to a profile. Let's just take that for an example. Let's go locks. Let's go keys. Let's go edit. You can give it a different name, but you really couldn't link it to um, you know, your, 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 your profile, you just had a different key. And so now they, they've given us the ability now to link to a different profile. So when you have your car activated, you have your phone attached, you can switch your profile and then it'll give you a pop-up here that will tell you, ask you if you would like to link that particular phone and phone key to a specific profile. So as you walk up to the car with that particular phone key, you have the option to now automatically in, implement your profile. So that's gonna be pretty cool as well. Uh, I can't get it to re-trigger now. I triggered it once and I can't get it to re-trigger. I'll try to change my profile and see if it, it does anything. I don't think it does right now. Uh, and then in, in the settings, you don't have the option to do that as well. I can't go in here and change that. I can only, only activate um, easy entry. But that's an undocumented feature. The dialogue does pop up as soon as you get the update and as soon as you change your profile for the first time while on a device. Uh, it does that. Let me see if I can come here and go to the device settings and see if I can uh, link anything here. Nothing here as well. So I'm not sure how to actually trigger it, but I do know it's there. 
And I do know that um, as you trigger through the different profiles, it'll ask you if it's the first time they've gotten the update to link your phone or your phone key to a specific profile. So that's a pretty cool feature as well. All right, other than that, um, everything else has been, been pretty straightforward based on the release notes, based on what you see here in the interface. I haven't really noticed anything major in terms of the UI, UX, anything like that. Uh, I would love for them to actually put these icons back here on the map the way that they used to be, the way that they are for the Model 3 and Model Y. Uh, it's really, really difficult, especially on beta, to flag the beta video by having to go into the menu and then press this button as opposed to it just being here all the time. It's also very difficult to not see, to see whether or not you're connected to Wi-Fi or LTE or whether you even have a signal right here, just having to go to this menu. And again, just makes it a lot easier. We have so much real estate on the screen. You could easily put it over here, no problem. Um, and so that's that's something I really wish they would, do, they would be able to do. All right, oh, before I go, I forgot the last thing, the most important one. The first unofficial, the first unofficial, and this has come out a while ago, shout out to Eric from Tesla Inventory. He pointed this out on Twitter, but the first full screen app for the Tesla Model S and Model X, the Palladium versions, the refresh versions, and that is the energy display, which has been long missing since this car is launched. Sorely missed, but when you go to energy display, you get the energy display, but not only that, you also get it full screen, taking full advantage, no longer trying to you know, streamline the code, leveraging Model 3 and Model Y code and have the app sort of justified this way. You take advantage of this big, beautiful 17 inch display and you get the full screen. Now, this isn't the greatest app to have that in. I would love for the browser to be full screen. I would love for the backup camera on demand to be full screen. You can make the backup camera full screen if you're in reverse, but you can't make it uh, full screen if you're not in reverse. Um, this is the first um, sort of non-theater related app that is full screen on here and you can actually drive around like this. So this is actually pretty cool. Uh, would love to, again, have some different functionality specifically for these cars, maybe split screen down the middle, snap some to the right, snap something to the left, have, have multitasking going on here. But this is, again, is the first full screen app for Tesla's Palladium cars, the Model S and Model X. OK, and then you can just swipe it down when you're done. Uh, other than that, you can just put this up. It's there. If you want to go to the browser, it pops up in the same side again, just taking advantage of the code, which is representative of the Model 3 and Model Y, where you have something dedicated here. So they just say, hey, we're going to use the same code. And instead of just having something here, we'll just have the map float here. Um, you can't bring up menu. Uh, you can't bring up the menu full screen. This doesn't go all the way across. To my knowledge, it stretches, but it doesn't go all the way across. Um, you can't bring up any other apps full screen. So if you go to energy display and you can't even bring up this energy display graph through the uh, apps here, it's not even a a available app, sort of an Easter egg uh, that you have to know how to access. Again, just using the voice command energy or energy display. We'll bring it up. Energy. And it brings it right up. All right. So that's something pretty cool. If you want to see your efficiency, if you want to just bas basically check your efficiency to see how efficient you're driving. Right. So you see how what your rated range is going to be, your average range, your instant range, so on and so forth. Over the last 30, 15, 20 miles, you'll be able to do that just like that. All right. So let me know in the comments. Let me know if you found any other cool features for the Palladium Model S and X that are undiscovered, hidden, buried in menus, something like that, a secret code, secret special way to activate it. Uh, let me know if there's anything I missed. Uh, we also have the ability to swap orientations only when the air is off. I would love for them to, again, keep this here when the air is, uh, is not on. All right, so I want to be able to go here. If the air is on, it goes away. You can't use it. But let me know in the comments. Let me know if there's anything else that you spotted, any other, other tricks and tips that you know of for the Palladium Model S and X. And let me know if there's any uh, new updates in the main release or the beta that have some features that we didn't talk about. Until the next time. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your Tesla.